What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Just a Tip. This is Dane James and our main man, Matt. A three-way tip yet again. The best of them. This is the, the second time you had a guest? Second time. Yes. The first one, I feel like we didn't really accomplish anything. So we're looking that was to, That was story time with Dill. Oh yeah, the Christmas one. I think all we did was confuse and offend people. So we're off. <laughs> we're <laughs> we're going yeah, to we're we're gonna, we're gonna do something a little more informative. If you recall, someone shit on the floor in that episode. Uh, really? So you have to come up with a story that's better than that. That beats that before this is over. <sighs> Probably not. No, you don't. We're not going to put that pressure on you. Yeah, that's a lot of shit. So, so we've known Matthew for a while now. He is a... Just a grade A human. A grade A human. He's the mastermind of a lot of our social media presence. Yeah. Yeah. So he makes yeah. us look pretty, gives us cool ideas. And he compliments us well with his large biceps. Yeah. Oh, oh shit. That's a- <laughs> It's like my, these, <laughs> the biceps are like my like a best feature. I don't know. Oh, everyone has their favorite feature. Yeah. Okay. What's yours? Uh, I don't know. I know I have a big head, so that's cool. <laughs> that is pretty cool. And I think I'm like an all around just solid package. Yeah. Just excited about the whole setup. It's cool. So, so today we were thinking, you know, what, what should we talk about that's going to actually mean something. And so we're like, new year, let's talk about goals and setting goals and all this excitement. And Matthew actually used to be a large fella, right? I still kind of am a large fella, but uh, I used to be a lot larger. <laughs> like just like, like, like big, like too thick, pretty thick. Yeah. So is that, is that a socially acceptable way to say that? Just but, too thick, but like the thick that you look at really, like, oh yeah. Or now I'm not kind of, okay. Yeah, 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 that's <laughs> then I don't think I was that kind of, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's that was one of the thicker pieces. Oh, just thick. Just thick. Yeah. So, so when did you start? When did, what was the moment of like, I, I want to, I want to change. Just give it, give us back. Just okay. give us a rundown. Yeah. And, and, and how much, like how much weight did you lose? Just out of curiosity. I lost a hundred pounds. Son of a of fat. That's a, so, not to mention all the muscle you put on. And then I gained like 20 pounds of muscle in my first year. Dang. So that was like the best year ever, which was awesome. And also been, it's been hard because now yeah, people always compare to that year. Right. And I was feel like I'm trying to go back to 2017 because that was just like Game the year. best year ever for fitness wise. I bet walking feels so much better now. I mean, just like <laughs> most activities. I guess it's got to be more comfy. Yeah, yeah it is. Your head. Ankles, knees, and toes, definitely. <laughs> I mean, that was a crazy You're thing. Like, my shell shoe size changed. Really? Yeah. So what? I was like a uh, and a half and over a ten and a half. What? Mm-hmm. You just had swollen feet? I guess. Like, Whoa. you can see, I actually on my Instagram have a before and after picture of my ankles. Because, like, my first picture of my ankle is just like... Oh, good old-fashioned cankle. Yep. And then the <laughs> second picture, you can actually see, like, a normal ankle. What? I you never yeah. think about like chubby feet. Never thought that was a thing. Yeah. Learned something new today. So, like, in 2016, I would say like when I was growing up, I was like chunky. So like fourth through sixth grade, I like hit this really really chunky phase. I, I think we all went through that. Yeah, most people go through it. Yeah, and well, some people. My cousins were like fit. They were really? like always thin and mus- muscly. Same with my brother. He called me a boy in punch. <laughs> yeah. Earlier, yeah. Like Chinese. I would go to family reunions and be feel like super intimidated because they all hit puberty way before me. And then they were all like muscly, whereas I was just a little roly poly. Yeah, it's uncomfortable. But um, after that in high school, I was like, I would just say average. Like I wasn't really big or small. I was just like an average body. Right. In my early 20s, though, is when I like hit this like mega depression. And I think mental health plays like a huge part in how your body and was stressed through the roof at that time oh, too. Oh yeah, it was just like the worst situation of my life. And this is how crazy it was. So I hit my highest weight, which was three hundred pounds, and um, I saved like four thousand dollars before I went to college. And in my first semester, I literally spent all of that money on fast food. Ew! Like what? 
Every <laughs> single dollar was spent on food, and it was so bad that um, I donated plasma to get a plasma card. So my parents, because we had like the joint bank account, because I was like 20. Yeah. So anyway, just so they can see how much food I was buying, I would donate plasma to get a plasma card to buy Taco Bell. So they wouldn't know like I was eating more food. Hey, so you, did you, you recognize? So you recognized it during the time. This wasn't like a flashback to where you're like, man, I spent four grand on. Um, fast no, food. I didn't even notice. I was so like. Your head was just out. Right? Yeah, and like food was like my sense control. Yeah, it was like yeah. I can eat whatever I want. Like no one is here to tell me like yes or no. It was just like my safe zone. Right. Um, anyway, so I got super depressed, gained a lot of weight, and then um, I just hit this point where I knew if I were to stay there, I like wouldn't survive it. I was like, I can't survive this. Like right. this will this will like destroy my life. And it wasn't just. Did like, you feel unhealthy? Like, did you feel like? Yeah. Like when you woke up, we're like, gosh, like I have some swollen feet. Yeah. I mean, I, I knew like inside, I always wanted to be fit. Like, I think everybody deep down inside like wants to look like people on Instagram. Like, right, even right. if they don't admit it or whatever, I think we all want to be have like a good body. At least feel like comfortable in your own skin, right? Yeah, but I was like so in denial of everything. Like, I didn't even like let myself think of those things just because it was a dark time. But right. what happened is I decided I need to make I needed to make a change. Um, and I moved to Utah, like, ended my semester. Where, like, where were you at before? I was in Rexburg, mm -hmm. Idaho, the most frozen place on well, the planet. Well, in your defense, there's not much to do up there. Yeah. yeah. And in the winter, it's really cold, yeah. so they just eat. It's either drugs or fast food. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I don't know if there's much drugs in Rexburg. In Rexburg? Have you been to Rexburg? No. No. I have. I've been I don't to think, <laughs> I bet there's one drug in Rexburg. Probably. Well, I'm from Idaho Falls, which is like 20 minutes away, but for some reason it's like a much better place in my mind than Rexburg. <laughs> Rexburg's just like this weird... You know what? I stopped for everyone from Rexburg, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, stopped, <laughs> I stopped at Walmart in Rexburg. Isn't that where we stopped? It was some grocery store. Well, if you're going to pick Idaho something Park. up, I think Walmart would be the spot. No, it was like a Winco or something. <laughs> some <laughs> What do you say? <laughs> it was Brohms. That sounds Brohms. Right. <laughs> Solid. Yeah, I mean, Rexburg's like, whew, we don't love Rexburg. Uh, so sorry, I don't want to like offend any Rexburg people. I think they understand. I don't know. I know. You like genuinely loves Rexburg. <laughs> but anyway, so I moved to Utah. I actually moved to Ogden with one of my friends and I got a job. Like literally, it was one day I was like, I have to leave. And I moved to Utah within two weeks. I got a job and moved. In two weeks, like heck yeah, it was like kind of crazy. So I got a job, and then as soon as I moved, like I was in a much better environment, and like I started feeling like a better person, and like just on the inside, things were going better. And so I started going to the gym, and then that's when uh, I don't know, like if I should say the gym's name, but I went to this gym in Ogden, and uh, it was a horrible experience. Really? Mm -hmm. In what way? So they like. Uh, it was like the $10 a month plan or whatever, which I was like, I can afford that. I literally had a part-time job, so I didn't have that much money. Right. I didn't know anything about gym or nutrition. Like, nothing. And, um, which is pretty common. Like, yeah. that's, that's a pretty common uh, story. Yeah. Kind of dives in. Like, I need to do something, but I don't know what. So I'm just going to yeah. start. Start out with jogging. And this is, like, <laughs> really frustrating, but I think makes you guys, like, what you guys do super important. Because I went to this gym, and uh, they sweet-talked me into signing up like, a one of their personal trainers. Mm. And I was like, yeah, I need that because I know nothing. And so I signed up with this personal trainer and he was such an idiot. Like he told me, like I asked him like for workouts, right? I was like, what can I do for my workouts? And he goes, uh, just uh, do this one and this one and this one. He showed me three machines, didn't show me how to use them and just told me once a week, just do these ones. And you were paying for that? A lot of money. Ugh. Like, I think I had to see him four times a month, that was like the contract, and they were charging me like $25 a visit, but then on top of that, I had to pay for like the gym fee and then the extra fee, so I was paying almost like $200 a month for this like situation. Ugh. And uh, then I said, okay, what I really need help with is like nutrition, because I know nothing, and he, uh, 
told me to download an app and pay for it. And I was like, <laughs> you take a picture of your groceries and then they send you like how to make your food. And I was like, and then that's an extra $50. He's like, month. listen, I know you're paying for me, but, but since you paid for me, I'm going to teach you to yeah. pay for something else for the so, information you need. That's, when I that's realized impressive. You are Good job, job, whoever that was. Yeah, I was so It's a Ponzi mad. scheme. And then he goes, but my advice is just eat cottage cheese before bed. What? Oh, Holy shit. That was literally, his only nutrition advice was like, just eat cottage cheese before bed. <laughs> You're like, I'm allergic to dairy, but okay. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so I uh, faked my death to get out of that gym because they wouldn't let you cancel. You legitimately contract. faked your death? No, you didn't. For legal reasons, I did. <laughs> this is Matthew's I mean, mom. He is dead. I took my mom's email and I was like, Matthew has died. He needs to get his membership. And they literally said no. Like, they what? were like, someone has to pay for it. And wow. so I sent them like a proof of address change. In the so that was like a really negative experience. And I think if somebody else would have ran into that, they probably would have just like given up. Yeah, that's a, that's a deal buster for most people. Because I'm afraid. It's like drooping. You don't want to droop. No. Not, on pu- not in public. Sorry. That's, so, un- um, that's uncomfortable. Anyway, a lot of people would have quit right then yeah. because that was frustrating. It was expensive. It was like, I actually gained more weight during that. And uh, I met, so anyway, I met with my friend. His name is Kevin. He was an awesome guy. He's like, you need to meet with my trainer. And I was like, like right. I don't know. And he's like, oh, really? I think you'd really like him. He was kind of just starting out, so he just opened his own gym. Um, and so he was pretty affordable. So I went and tried him out and he like changed my life. Like meeting him was like one of the best things ever for me because he taught me all about like macros and how they like influence your body. He took my measurements. Right. He uh, like plans all my workouts for me and then like alternates them every week. Well, and I, to stop like just for a second, I think that is why you know, you, going back to, you know, we've kind of gotten hounded for intuitive eating, mm-hmm. which you can do, but you have to have an understanding mm-hmm. of what a macro is, like what a fat does, what a carb does, what a protein does. And once you have that, like that is crucial information. You've got to be aware of it. I agree. If, yeah. If you could have gone back to the very start, I mean, would your, your advice be to someone in your same starting position to be get someone that you trust yeah that understands the process rather than just going to any old gym yeah and yeah. just attempting something like you have friends that have been through the process yeah. or you know there are ways you can like ask your community, yeah. ask people in your community ask your friends right you can even like i some something i did is like uh, follow people on instagram on my fitness account that I thought were like influential or I wanted to be like. So like right. Beast to Beast was one of them. I think he's like super awesome. Just like people like that, I like sent them messages, you know, and even they like responded with more helpful information than that first gym. So there's like lots of places you can go. Right. I mean, you, you kind of got to go to someone that's obviously been through it. If I, if I would have known when I started what I know now just by utilizing the community, yeah. right? I would have been five years ahead. Yeah. But the tough, tough part is, is you don't, like where you don't really know anything and everyone wants to give you advice yeah. that thinks they know, you get some funky information. Yeah. You know, like there's so much bad information going out there. So we'll say you, you probably lucked out a little bit where you just hit someone solid that was like, hey, Definitely. This, let, cut the crap. Like, this is what's going on. Yeah. Instead of, dude, you just need cottage cheese before bed. Oh, no. Like, you're going to be a little farty. And but. I can't do that, so. <laughs> and that's the key. I do think that is why, you know, over at Complete Nutrition, we have such a high percentage of return customers. Mm-hmm. Is we don't bullshit. Like, yeah. we've both been through the ringer. We, we've both fooled around. Yeah. In multiple areas for a long time. And then, you know, we, we shoot people straight. Yeah. There's no fluff involved, which for someone starting out, I mean, that is huge. I right. wish I would have had that. Right. But at the same time, it's kind of like we were talking before we started this. Like, it's a constant evolution. It's not like, 
like you probably had your goals. Like you see people are kind of inspiring. You're like, God, oh, I like that. I like that. I like that. Kind of piecing together what you maybe what your vision is. Mm-hmm. But it always should be kind of changing and evolving, mm-hmm. you know. So it's like you have your goal, but like, are you ever going to be like, I reached it. No. I'm there. I don't think I'll like. I think some goals I can reach. Right. But like, I, I don't know. I th- I see what you're saying. It's like hard to really actually reach that perfect goal because it's never. It's always going to be changing. And you're probably going to set a new expectation of yourself of like, because out of the gate you're like, man, if I could just be, you know, get to there, I think I'll be happy. Yeah. And then, you, you know, you accomplish that and like, God, oh, I think I can do better. Never, I think I can do better. Enough, yeah. yeah. Like it's the same, you know, I think the same thing applies to life. Like it's, it's not like, like, oh, I hit it. I'm good. I'm done. Crushed it. Now I'm done. One thing I like had to get over was feeling intimidated. Like one of my goals at the very beginning was to just like go inside a gym. Like not even work out or anything, but like go in the gym walk around it and then like leave just because I even felt like intimidated going in that people would think like oh my gosh what's that guy like everyone's looking at yeah and I feel like if I would have met you guys back then I may have felt like very intimidated just because you're like buff and like bro you cool but I think I would have felt intimidated the one thing I'm, I'm, not, sure. I'm not sure how to take that <laughs> <laughs> it's good but the thing I'm trying to get at is like if I would have known then what I know now is most people are actually pretty cool like you guys are really awesome and really kind and I think if people could I don't know I feel like when I see fit people at the gym I used to think like oh they're probably like tools and jerks and whatever right but now that I've like been going to the gym more I meet those people and they're actually like super nice and they are just like working on themselves and they're actually awesome they give they usually are like helpful right and like give you advice so I don't know I hope I hope people can learn from the podcast that you guys are like really awesome and they shouldn't be intimidated because oh, well I mean, really nice. I, I mean I think we all think like I'll I'll go into the gym you know and still someone new that I've never seen before that you know is pretty big throws off kind of a shitty vibe yeah and I know I do it myself no and, and initial no. And I have done it now too yeah initial, <laughs> become initial <laughs> thought initial thought you're like that guy's a douchebag. Yeah. <laughs> and then you get to know him and you're like, okay, he's, he's, he's cool. actually pretty cool. Yeah. So I think everyone kind of goes through that. Mm-hmm. But would you agree that, you know, as you've taken control of your, you know, of your fitness, of your nutrition, and just kind of taking control of that aspect of your life that majority of people don't have control over, mm-hmm. that like some of that... Like the way you're feeling towards others comes down to like, well, you just have more confidence now. You feel better about yourself and that way, yeah. like it's okay that like, as someone you would have like nec- maybe judged that game, like, God, that guy's a, guy's a douche. Yeah. Now it's like, dude, that, that guy looks really good. Like yeah. I kind of want to, like, like he's respect. doing, like I like those, like that's, that's cool if he's doing, I might implement that into my workout or something like that instead of like, ah, yeah. what a tool. A thousand percent. I think now I bear, like I barely even pay attention to other people in the gym as often as I did before. Before it was like, what is everyone else thinking of me? And now it's more of just like, I have my plan and I'm here to work out. Like I don't even care. Like you, you, you don't see like any, anyone that's right there. potentially screwing around in the gym. Like you don't even notice it. You, yeah. know, you know, when people come in and say that they are intimidated in the gym, I would but, say the majority of people aren't even like paying attention, you know? Yeah. But. It just takes it takes time to get there. Like that's one thing I just hope people can learn is like it can be scary and nerve wracking, especially if you're not used to it. But if you have a plan and you start going, you will like feel like you belong in that environment. Cause like that was something I like believed growing up is that I just wasn't a sports guy. Right. Like I don't belong in the gym world. Like that's not like what I should be a part of. So I didn't ever go. Right. But now I like wish I would have like looked back at myself and just. I don't know, like went to the gym because I would have been so much farther ahead. And well, and it sounds like you've hit like a healthy, you've got like a healthy mindset of, you know, you want to progress. You're not obsessed to the point of like taking things to the stream, to the extreme. You understand like this is a process. It's slow. It's not going to happen overnight. Like those are all things like once you deal with that, it just can become and should become just a healthy, normal part of your life that's just an awesome part of your life, right? 
instead of like, yeah. I hate myself because I'm not. Meh, 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 meh. I was compared to, to like meditation. meditation. Yeah. Like some people meditate to like really center themselves. I always feel like the gym is like a form of meditation because you're like super focused on one thing, like breathing, lifting, like focusing on your body or muscles. It's like really grounding now. It's oh, heck like, yeah. Yeah. Heck yeah. So now it like relieves anxiety instead of like induce it. Oh, absolutely. And if you're having a cruddy day, like tell me that if you like have super stressful day, everything went wrong, the gym can be like, oh, that was that was the moment that made the day okay. Evan, have you like, <laughs> ever regretted doing a workout? Mm, no. Not once. Well, that's it. I got injured. Okay. That's yeah, fair. Yeah, that's okay, like, that's that's fair. But like, if, if you had... One of those days, you're like, man, I really don't want to go to the gym today for whatever reason. It didn't yeah. feel great, you know, whatever happened, and you made an excuse to not go, and then you turned it around and decided, you know what, I'm going to go. Mm-hmm. You ended up feeling better after, yeah. and you've never, ever once regretted that. No. So for the people that are making the excuses as to why they can't get to the gym, you're not going to regret it if you go. Yeah. I always heard it's like you choose your heart. Like you either don't go to the gym and feel bad and feel guilty for not going right. and, or you go to the gym it's hard to go right like both sides it's hard to do right you just have to choose like what hard you want to deal with so what would your top three things be for someone getting into the gym kind of a newbie so i have to think wisdom from matthew <laughs> put you on the put you on the spot the better first, be good yeah <laughs> um the first thing is like and so I always make sure I have a plan because like when I started, if I were to just walk into a gym and like like randomly pick machines, that would have been like a worse experience. So so having a workout plan mapped out. I plan my workouts and my meals. And I write everything down in a planner. So I say write your goals down and have a plan. Like it's so important, especially when you're starting out to write everything down. Once you get further along and you start developing good habits, you don't have to focus as hard on like planning perfectly. But for me, like writing down my plan and setting those goals is like, was pivotal. Like right. I used to take every Sunday night and I'd spend 30 minutes writing down my meal plan and my workout plans were already planned by my trainer, so I never had to like worry too much about those. So that'll be my first one, is just make sure you're planned because it like reduces so much anxiety about going to the gym and like, right. what do I eat? What about this meal? Like just like takes all that burden off your plate and you're like, I already planned it. So my second one would be to like track your food, like using my fitness pal to track on mm-hmm. your food. Just get a feel for what, what, what has what macros in it. Yeah. Like I mean, where are all these carbs coming from? <laughs> my question is always like, how can I know what progress I made if I don't even know what input I had? Right. So it's like, I could have lost like five pounds of fat in a month and gained two pounds of muscle. If I didn't track any food, it would be like, well, what did I do to get that? Right. And I have no idea. I can't like replicate it. I can't fix it or change it like if I want to do better. So I think tracking your food has that purpose of like, you can look back and see like what could have been better or what went right. Right. So I think that's like super pivotal. Also, it keeps you accountable to yourself. I always look at macros like spending money. like intuitive eating is kind of like just spend buy whatever you want that's how I always interpret it I know it's different for other people someone's gonna be pissed I know I know it helps with certain things and mindsets for me it's better for me to understand like this is my budget like right if I were to just spend all my money I would be really in debt you know no and you have to you have to you have to do that it's at one point you have to track your macros and understand what's what, what's coming from what, and then over time, you can implement intuitive eating with structure to hit those macros that you need to hit. Now with that, when it comes to tracking macros, the biggest thing I preach to my clients if they're going the macro-based route Mm -hmm. is map your food out the day before. Yeah. Map it out, make sure you hit all your numbers, because the biggest thing that I see with macro tracking is you know, for breakfast, you eat a bowl of Cheerios and some whole milk and a piece of toast, and you put it in my fitness pal and you're oh, tracking no, macros. Right. And then at the end of the day, you pull up and see how you did, just with no plan, 
and you're 120 grams short on protein, you're mm -hmm. 300 grams of carbs overboard, 20 grams of fat overboard, yeah. and you're wondering, okay, I track macros, but why is it working for me? Track to train wreck, that's yeah, awesome. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Track to normal day you, you just solidified how shitty you You just solidified how bad you eat, good job. Yeah. And I would say, like, if the macros feel overwhelming at first, like, starting to just track what you eat is a, the best first step, but I, completely agree. Yeah, I, well, and that's why I take it, honestly, when I talk to, to most people that have never, that don't even know where to start, to ensure that they're gonna get their macros in a decent place, I say, hey, throw everything, like just forget everything, you're gonna eat five times a day, mm -hmm. and you've gotta hit X amount of protein this many times a day, that way you're guaranteed you're gonna hit your protein, because mm -hmm. no one, no one under eats carbs and fat. Like I literally have never met a soul that's like, man, I just need more carbs in my life. Yeah. Now, now one thing <laughs> that they do miss on though is vegetables, especially right. when you start right. out eating five times a day. Right. Now, one thing that we do have uh, in our sponsorship on today's episode is actually sweat ethic. Okay, we've got a multivitamin. We've talked about it before. It's called Vita Greens. Full serving of greens. Full multivitamin complex, prebiotics, probiotics, digestive enzymes. They're the best in the business. And, which is fantastic on top of that, is we do have a new uh, electrolyte blend coming out relatively soon with some new product drops from Sweat Ethics. So, if you haven't tried their uh, products before, come see James and myself over at the shop and we'll get you lined up. If you miss your veggies, we got you covered. So, yeah. Let's be honest. No one eats other vegetables. No. I can't. Well, I get so like... fetching farty and uncomfortable. Well, <laughs> I can't even handle it. And I don't even know which ones do it. Yeah. I just feel like, I just feel like, I don't know. I don't know. I feel like, like broccoli. Like all the foods. <laughs> broccoli's, broccoli's just, that whoever said broccoli's a superfood, it's super uncomfortable. That's what it is. <laughs> For me. No. Probably broccoli lovers. Awesome. Keep eating it. Sorry, that was, I digress. No, that's <laughs> so, so what, what's your your third? Yeah, so my third one is uh, taking progress pictures and measurements. Huge, huge, huge. So huge. once you plan to eat your food, you have to continually track how you're, you're doing. I say, like, if I never took my progress pictures, I would have thought I was making no progress. I would and taking my measurements. So every time I check in with my trainer, he does like pinch tests, and we like take my body weight. He like measures all my biceps and muscles and all that stuff. And then I can see like, if I lost weight, I know if it was muscle or fat. And if I gain weight, I know if it was muscle or fat. Because there was times where I'd go and check in and I weighed the same weight and I worked freaking hard for like two weeks and I was like, I was so frustrated. I was like, I'm making no progress. And then after we took all those measurements, it was like, oh. <laughs> well, you were so caught up on the scale because when you originally started, that was, that was your measurement of yeah. progress. That's yeah. It. So scale, terrible measurement of progress. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And also scale. making sure you're comparing your measurements to your measurements. So like, if I use a scale at home, I should only use that scale. But if I use a scale at home and I compare it to a scale at a gym, like they could be different. Wait, right. The day. Right. Yeah. So taking it at the same time of day at the, on the same scale was also important because like. My scale at home weighed me four pounds heavier than my trainer's scale. Right. And that was consistent for like the whole year. Yeah. <laughs> so I always mentally made a note that like making sure I can, was comparing correctly. So, so going off that and what we've talked about and for the New Year's resolution folks that are goal setting, what are we sending for an ultimate tip to wrap this up? You start us off. My ultimate tip, go like, going just a step before what everything you said, just start. Start doing something. Cause, cause you'll ba you just take baby steps and you'll just constantly evolve in the right direction. Cause it can be overwhelming, but just get going. Just anything, like go work out, go walk, start, just start. And don't stop. Don't ever stop progressing. That's, that's my ultimate tip. I love that. I would say my tip would kind of like build off of yours is like, if you feel scared, like do it anyway. Yeah. Like 
the, the one thing I think that changed my whole life was when I challenged myself to do one scary thing a day. I decided to do that for a whole year. Like, Grab a spider. Yeah. <laughs> Literally could be anything. It sounds dumb. I feel like all the millennials who relate to me, but like one of them was like making a phone call to like set up a doctor's appointment. You know, little things like right. that can like you feel like nervous about. Like if I say, okay, this is my one scary thing, I'm going to do it. Going to the gym was one of those. Uh, calling my trainer and setting an appointment was one of those. Right. Getting, un- getting comfortable with uncomfortable. Taking a progress picture was one of those. Right. Because uh, like... I didn't want to take a progress picture because I was super self-conscious. It was right. like nerve-wracking. I didn't want anyone to see it in my phone. Like, right. But I did it, and I'm so grateful I did it. So I would say just start, and then don't be afraid. Like, and get yeah, get uncomfortable. Yeah. It's money. Uncomfortable is good. Dang. Go. Yes. Building off of those, get uncomfortable. Get started. Uh, honestly, hire a professional or talk to a professional in the industry. Talk to someone that is going to give you proper info, right? Because getting started is one thing, but then diving into all the information on right. the language is blown up by ads. Like, right. you don't know what's real, what's not, and you get yourself down the rabbit hole real quick. Right. So, all you local folks, come check us out. Yeah, come check we'll us out. We'll set you up straight. Hire a professional. We will not lead you astray. And bang, bang. And that is the three-way ultimate tip. Ugh. See you guys.